come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes at you every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, Whether we're we're ready for it or not. Yeah, it's true. Welcome to Colin's (laughs) final episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show. (laughs) The Atrocity Exhibition. Um, So what we'd like you to do is if you like what we do here, please give us a star rating, a review, or a thumbs up on wherever you found us, whatever service. If you're using iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, tune in, whatever it is. Subscribe, rate, all the things. Stars. All the things. That's right. Uh, And so what we do here is movies chosen each week by one of the internet radio superstars. Who are they, you ask? Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight's movie is chosen by... Colin. <laughs> That's right. It's my fault. Colin, what we watch tonight? And- we watched oh. a very bizarre movie from 1981 called Possession. Did anyone Possession. direct this movie? Uh, it's a Polish <laughs> fellow like named Andrzej Zalowski. Mm-hmm. Did he do anything else? Yeah, apparently he's got like a, a following. Um, I of, mean, I, of I, cultists? <laughs> I don't. I am not familiar with his work. <laughs> a following with like Nikes and Kool Aid kind of following. <laughs> you begin to wonder yeah. after seeing this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Was so this I'm gonna, movie written? Uh, I think. Did he write? I think he wrote it. Yeah. Mm. I, I just and assumed it was. Term? I assumed yeah. it was a Tommy Wiseau situation where it was self financed and self directed uh, and like so he just could, could do be. whatever he wants. I, I just assumed that got, was like, it. I think he has like. I think when I looked up, he had like 14 films or something like oh, that. Oh Jesus! So he, that's yeah. Far too I many. know. And have you seen the rest of I them? I have never seen another Zulowski movie. <laughs> are in there fact, any that are I had not, I had never heard of him outside of this movie. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. But this movie's got Sam Neill in it. It does. Mm-hmm. Granted, this is probably like one of his first movies. I would hope so. When was uh, The Omen 3? No idea. And you're asking mm-hmm. questions that... Nope. Right. That had to be, well, Damien Owen 3, I think it was somewhere in around this time period. And it also stars uh, French actress Isabelle Ajani, who I have seen in a movie before that was called Nosferatu the Vampire, the Werner Herzog remake. Mm. Of uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I she thought she was familiar. That, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I have no, I don't have a, a read on this movie. So seriously, <laughs> well, we were all relying on you, yeah. honestly. I think it's egregious so. for the man who brought this. Here. Yeah, I was waiting for you to tell me what the fuck I just watched. Yeah, same. Um, I was hoping that maybe you would have some insight in this. Um, oh, great! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sure, put it on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I guess the reason that I brought it was I remember seeing it once before, and it was uh, just one of the most bonkers, you know crazy things How I've long ever seen. You, you this? watched this more than once? This is the second time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and so. when was this first viewing? Uh, a couple of years ago. Couple two, years? Within the last two years. Okay. So substances were not involved? Uh, I may have been having a libation or two when I watched it. I just remember like it made an impression. What, what, well, what, uh, yes. what did you hear about this movie that drew you to it? Like what was somebody said uh, possessed? Yeah. How'd you come about this? Or possession. Is possession. 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 Possessed was a different movie. Possession. Well, Obsessed. There's so many movies called Possession. <laughs> there's that one with Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who plays Negan. He was in a Possession. Uh-huh. That was 2012. Um, I had heard about this. Like, I remember the cover art or the poster. So this actually got like a theatrical release in the United States back in 81. Um, when they but, put anything in theaters back then, apparently. Well, they cut it. I guess the, the thing that everybody heard about it was that it was edited by like half an hour or something like that for American <laughs> theaters. I would have. God bless. I would have yeah. li- liked that version. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, right? Like, how would that one play? Uh, and then, yep. I don't it. think it would be any less confusing. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think <laughs> the, it would. The tagline is, uh, is it Desire. Or violation, devotion, or bondage. Your hidden fears will be aroused. Is it just, what is it? That should be the same <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> what, what is it? What, what is Inhuman it? ecstasy fulfilled. <laughs> uh, oh, sure. I mean, yeah. I, mm. <sighs> They're making some bold claims here, you know? <laughs> 
83% on the Rotten Tomatoes. Well, okay, that 83%. Rotten Tomatoes means nothing well, anymore. But this is, like, yeah. I've seen this movie show up in the, like, you know, the 20 horror movies that you have to see or, so, or that you've never seen that you should see. And this one, especially in recent years, is starting to show up on these lists. Like, somehow it's out there. We're spreading the disease here just by talking about right. it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was why or how I ended up, like, finding it and watching it for the first time. And then since then, I've seen memes of the subway scene in this movie. Like, the gifts are like... <laughs> oh, oh that, sense. that is a memeable scene, yeah, for sure. Very but memeable. I, I'm hoping that the disease is, like, the, the It Follows monster where we're passing it to somebody else and they'll leave us alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we're giving it away to someone else right now, and then we won't have to deal with it anymore. One day, ten years from now, we're going to come downstairs and be like, we got a movie we're watching. It'll start playing, and we'll just go, no! <laughs> Everybody's in a, in a state of shell shock after watching this movie. I remember that it's was a the way violation that, yeah. of our senses and our souls. Yeah, I feel like less of a person now. Yeah, this movie is an assault. It changed me. Yeah, yeah? <laughs> I feel like it did. <laughs> You're Sean's like, I'm off movies now. now? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's not a good. It's not a good weekend for movies. <laughs> I'm kind of starting to wonder good. if movies are ever actually good, or if I'm just have been, you know, like Stockholmed into thinking they're good. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm starting to think. No, dude, there's good movies. We're entering the psychosis right now. <laughs> They're all yeah. bad. There's good movies out there, man. <laughs> this movie has like a, a budget. So somebody like, you know, I mean, it takes place in uh, Cold War era Germany. It's 1981. The so the the wall is still up. Is there a reason for shooting it in in Germany? It's cold looking yeah. like it's cold in its appearance, I should say. Not in like, like it's, it's, yeah, it's dreary. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, it's off-putting. They kept, sh- they kept having those shots of the guards at the wall. So clearly there was a point for it. I just don't know what he was going for. All right. I suggest to you the Berlin wall. It's a country divided. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, yeah. Like yeah. a marriage. I don't know. No. All right. That's, that's as far as <laughs> okay. I got on that. It's pretty hacky, but I mean, yeah. that's, that's something. You, you pulled something out of it. So, I mean, it's more you know. than I had. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll uh, take it. There's a war going on, I suppose. Mm-hmm. That I don't know. So this is a... Uh, are weird corner monsters in just in Germany? Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, the architecture, uh, you know, Michaela had mentioned it, or did Holly mention it while we were watching the movie. It's like, this is a depressing, yeah. just looking mm-hmm. city. It was just dark the, and... I mean, normally... Uh, cement and... Yeah, I, mean, I really enjoy old architecture. I love old buildings. They're really beautiful, the ornate fixtures and everything. But everything was just, like, dirty and gloomy and just... Like it looked like it had mildew on it, mm-hmm. you know. Like yes. and their apartment was like so sparse, like and yeah. like the way it was dressed and everything, and every yeah, everything was just different shades of gray. Everything, yeah, everything's very yeah. cold really gross. and stark and mm-hmm. just blah. Yeah, put something on those walls, people. Liven it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what the. Uh, I mean, I guess you know we say that the the movie charts a uh, it's like a uh, domestic drama where there's a marriage that's disintegrating between Sam Neill and his wife, but as it does, like the apartment that they occupy uh, gets more and more dirty, and it's not like um, there's shit going growing on the walls or anything. It's just like they're leaving crap all over the place. They leave their son unattended. He, you know, Sam Neill comes home and like the kids got shit all over his not literal shit, like but mm-hmm. and it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like jam or something. Like a there's like jam. plates all over the floor at one point. With yeah, food left yeah. on them. Yeah. But it's very odd because it it doesn't always stay that way. Like at some points, it's clean again. But then it gets messy again. It's yeah. very, I don't know, it's really odd. But then when it gets messy, it gets, like, fucking messy. It's gr- The movie's it's disgusting a, in a way that, like, gross. like, I don't want to, like, when I say it's disgusting, I don't want you going out there thinking that, you know, it's like, oh, it's full of blood and gore, although it is, but not in, like, you know, a thing kind of way or something mm-hmm. like that. No, like, there's it's just, just moldy bread on their kitchen counter. Yeah. 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 Like, if, ew. If food plates were left on the floor for a week and... Yeah. Mm-hmm. A sausage maker was left, like, dirty. There's an extended while. scene of... Yeah, a Johnny making sausage, literally making sausage. Like, yeah. And they're yelling over the sound of the grinder this, yeah. for this entire and scene. Yeah. And you're, just, and yeah. you're just waiting for the electric slicer to come into play, but it takes a while for it mm. to come into play. I was hoping she, her finger would just go down to the well, sausage. That's what I was waiting for. Yeah, because she, yeah. she kept yeah. looking away while she's slicing. I'm like, what the fuck are you yeah. doing? Like, you've got a slicer. Like, watch your fucking hands. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's but that, yeah, no. Odd. And like you said, it, it goes from like dirty to clean, but I think that 
comes into play when they're going, I'm, I'm going to say, in and out of their psychosis. Yeah, yeah. It's even shot differently. Like when they're when he's playing with his son, Bob. It's a weird name for a kid. I did, I did like that the kid's Bob. name was Bob. That was kind but of they shoot it differently, too, because it's shot more from a lower angle up in those scenes. So you don't get that look at the ground and everything. And it's, it's I guess, quote unquote, happier times for these people. When the psychosis and everything starts hitting, it's more like the camera's farther up in a corner, shooting, looking down upon them, kind of just watching them as they adventure through their apartment in their mess and everything. It's fucking weird. Did I miss something? Because, like, does it ever get better or, like, she leaves? Like, it, it's I don't. It, it's like who occupies the apartment? I guess is part of the like he comes home. He's like a spy or something. I don't know what the fuck he does. Some kind really of government know. contractor. Uh, There's uh-huh. some you know I don't know something where he's watching people. Feels like the guy with the pink shoes who shows up at the end. That I, yeah. or the pink socks. I don't understand that. Yeah. Um, but he comes home. She you know so like the the relationship is frayed and she doesn't want him in the house or something. So I think he goes to an a motel or apartment for a while three weeks something where he loses his fucking mind loses his mind (laughs) like like he's coming off drugs Mm -hmm. like severely yeah it's it's like he's going through major withdrawals but it's i think it's i think he breaks because of what his wife does to him this is my interpretation of it Mm -hmm. i think he has a break at that point and so he is just suffering in this apartment where it looks like he's having withdrawals he's rocking on the bed he's he's sweating he's it's it's like he's been in the same clothes for three weeks just food, like we said, on the floor everywhere. It takes a lot to sweat through your oh, suit jacket. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. It just adds to that level of griminess and like, ugh, uh, the whole movie is just, there's people you rolling know, around in fucking eggs and other fluids. Uh, and you know the house from Fight Club? Yeah. Yeah. That's if... That's the best way I can describe this that, gri- that griminess, <laughs> that yellowness. Yeah. That disgusting, that's the yeah. disgusting we're talking about in this movie. Mm-hmm. That's the closest thing I can equate it to. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why I'm wondering is like, is does the place clean up when he comes back and she leaves? Because she's having an affair, it turns yeah. out, mm-hmm. with this crazy German, German guy named Heinrich. Heinrich. Who's uh, wonderful for a while. I don't know how to describe Heinrich. Eccentric. Uh, he's and a that's kung fu night. master. No, he's. Uh, I don't know. Well, he's one of these guys. Who, it's the disco era or something. So his shirt's like always like unbuttoned to his belly button. And there's only one button at the very bottom of that. I don't thing. know if that's disco or just European. Maybe yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a European Lothario. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to. Dis- uh, this guy yes. is like out of. I mean, every everybody in this movie is like off the chain, but. <laughs> They're all from different movies. They're all in different movies. Yeah, every seriously. every actor in this movie is in a completely different movie from the other one. I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of those movies you found out that like all the actors are given different scripts that don't line up at all. Like that would actually make this movie make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, because I can't explain it. There's like there's scenes where you assume that the director is like encouraging. Uh, like for instance, there's one that I'm thinking of where Sam Neill confronts his wife about something along the the, the journey of their divorce or you know uh, marriage and marital implosion. That happens like twenty times. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because they're it's like they're really honest with each other in the way they're talking about, it, even though they're keeping secrets from each other. It's like one of those really raw. Like the guy who wrote this is clearly going through like. A really bad breakup. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. And yes. it's using this movie to like either. To work through exer- some things. Yeah. He, he is, but he's not using dialogue that anyone would actually use. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like exactly. He's, he's working out the conversation that he's having in his head. It's not anything that's real. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. it is. It's like every single possible permutation of what you wish you would have said to somebody yeah. or what they could have said or what you were thinking. And you every know. little uh, departure from it that just pops in your head when you're thinking of those things. Like those are in there too. Mm-hmm. Just random weird stuff. But it's delivered in the weirdest, you know, like uh, the scene I was talking about. Sam Neill's encouraged to sit there like, uh, you know, very calm, sitting on the couch. I love everyone. And his wife <laughs> is encouraged to act like, I mean, just a l- raving lunatic. I mean, yeah. she's pulling at her, uh, you know, sleeves and. Yeah, that watch. She's trying to get that off through most of the thing. Just like she's trying to shove it off her hand and everything. Yeah. It's very intense. Yeah. Like every scene in this movie is like dialed up to, you know. 
every ten. every single every single one. yeah every walk into the room at 10 that had yeah. to have been a direction for this right like, you're already there like every single reaction in this movie is the opposite of what a real human would do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everything like they're sitting on a couch but she's like flailing about and I get that there's like a possession factor or whatever but I don't think it's quite there yet this is just like a freak out and then later on this like weird Rico Suave kind of guy, he's standing there, she's stabbing him, and he's literally not reacting. Mm-hmm. She's just, like, pricking him with a knife, and he's not saying anything. He's not doing anything. Every single person in this movie is reacting in the complete opposite way of a human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's fucking weird. Mm-hmm. It's like, what's the, I don't know what the intention is behind that. I don't know. You know? Because they're, they're delivering, like, these... Philo- philosophical, you know, asides or soliloquies, right? Mm-hmm. While bouncing off the wall, there's a scene yeah. where Heinrich shows up drunk, and he's like, literally, like crashing into the walls and yeah. spinning around. But the the what he's saying is like, you know, paragraphs of. Uh, I mean, it's lucid thought, even if he's supposed to be uh, drunk. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, this is some kind of philosophical thing about love and loss and existing in this triangle i just want my you know <laughs> my harmony back or whatever. Werner? Werner, yeah. Is that you? <laughs> yeah they get I saw love one time. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> such was... an odd intimacy in this like i really really thought that at one point sam neil and that guy were gonna start making out mm. they got so freakishly close and like it was just odd. I really thought they were going to start kissing. You're just saying like the physical, like uh, the closeness touching. and the yeah. touching. There's yeah. like there's no pretense between any of these it's, people. Yeah, they're just they're coming at you like like we said at ten raw, yeah. right from the when beginning. When Samuel just, came to his apartment and confronted him, and they started, um, and they started like I, I, after, after a while they started fighting, but at first they were just like close. Mm-hmm. It was just so weird. Yeah. Yeah, everything, but it's like, it's everything, everyone that he deals with, it's like there's this invasion of space or whatever. Is it just designed, like, to, like, the rest of the movie, the sound design, the cam- fisheye camera angles, yeah. just to be, like, the whole thing is just a cumulative effect of being unsettling. Yes. You know? It's a very unsettling movie from, like, frame one, and it never lets up for two fucking No, you're right. Out- no. Crazy yeah, the, hours. Her walking up to him, meeting him at the curb is unsettling. It's just mm-hmm. like, Jesus, they're getting intense right off the bat. I mean, when he's like, I'll take him to the zoo, and she, like, storms off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're like, what? Really? You don't like the zoo that it's much? The zoo. Yeah. Who doesn't like the zoo? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, eventually, you know, um, Sam Neill's character hires a private investigator because that's what you do. I mean, like, there is somewhere in here there's, like, uh, I can see, like yeah, a I can dramatic see what they would have cut down yeah. to get to try and get to an, a, a clear uh, through line, a narrative for this thing. The, 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 there's like fleeting moments of yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but it's like somewhere it underneath is... it, all this, this pile of crazy you know, stuff. There is like this like domestic thing where a guy thinks his wife is cheating on him, or she admits it, I guess. Yeah. So he hires a private detective to follow the uh, the wife, and he does a very good job. Oh, so subtle! <laughs> he is so good. <laughs> it's, at one point, he's like literally running right next to her to keep up with it. Yeah, yeah, because it starts off. I mean, this is again what Holly was saying. It's like nothing happens the way that normal human beings do any of this right. stuff. It starts off with you know him uh, trailing behind her at a good distance. They're walking, mm-hmm. but by the end of it, you know, several shots later, it's like a full on gallop. She's running somewhere, and he's. You know, trucking right behind her. Is the effect supposed to be comedic? At one point, he trips, and that made me laugh. So, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little Monty Python ish. Yeah. A little bit. There should have been some Benny Hill wick yeah. sex under that scene. Yeah. Well, I mean, we get almost the equivalent. We get uh, 80s Euro pop or something. At There's the like, weirdest moments. Yeah. That, the <sighs> weirdest moments. Yeah. Because there's so much of this movie with no score behind it, like none. And then when they do choose to do it, it's so tonally off. Yeah. yeah. E- even the chase, 
like when he's following her that again that's the same thing it's the opposite of how a normal person would react yep. because you'd think someone would be like oh all right they might walk a little quicker or everything but they just break out into a run and they're just like i said no pretense like she's running from him he knows it so he's running after her she knows he's running after her they're just it's just, everyone knows what they're doing nobody's trying to hide nobody's trying to hide anything everybody's pretty but- up front well, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll go with that theory for now. The idea that, you know, it's like, yeah, all their emotional content is like right there on yeah. the ragged edge and they're screaming it at each other all the time. Yeah. But they are hiding. Are they hiding things from each other? She is sleeping with a tentacled, gooey, you know, bloody monster that she keeps in an apartment. There's that. There's that. <laughs> that is an element of this movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. The monster is designed by Carlo Rambaldi. He uh, won the Oscar, I think, for E.T. the following year. No. Wow. <laughs> what? Wow. Wow. Uh, well, oh he's my got God. range. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'll say that. Yeah. Oh. I was just, like, Spielberg was like, I want you to design an alien for yeah. me uh-huh. based on what I've seen. I saw what you did we with can, the we possession. Can, yeah. We can mm-hmm. make a winner. Yeah. That was probably the scary E.T. version that mm-hmm. he designed first. But is this, I mean, is this like a weird flipping of genre then? It's like, you know, because I know I I brought this, you know, it's a Saturday Night Freak Show. And how long were you sitting there going like, this is a drama? Yeah. For a while. For a while. For a yeah. while. Yeah. yeah. And, I was, while. and I was wondering, I'm like, Colin, what the fuck did you pick? Like, uh, this is where, what, what element, like, I get it if they're like, go just bug nuts. I suppose it fits, but then obviously there was uh, gooey monsters with long heads and eyes. And murders. I mean, then Murder. it suddenly gets bloody. There's shootouts and explosions, and you're like, what? I don't know what's happening here. What is happening? It's like the disintegration of the world. Yeah. <laughs> The beginning, it almost feels like a like a play for like the first yes, like I agree. thirty minutes, even mm-hmm. yeah. It's thinking. like I was like this, yeah. This seems like something that you would do with minimal set, you know, in front of a and live it, audience yeah. for the performances. You know, I thought about that specifically when he's talking to his wife on the phone and he's asking her those very blunt, direct questions where he's like, he's like, do you? Have, I don't remember what he said. But he's like, do you have a lover? How long have you been with him? Do you sleep with him? Do you enjoy it? That More dialogue, that dialogue was actually very similar to a confrontational piece in the movie Closer, which is based on a play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. very much yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. It was almost word for word a lot like that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's to me. I was like, I was like, kind of going off on that thought, and I was like, this is something you would hear about, like. Uh, like someone who's kind of put out to pasture in Hollywood would do this play and they would get a bunch of buzz for it because mm-hmm. it's like it's right? literally yeah. the, just them be getting to be up to 11 for, you know, an yeah. hour. So, yeah. you know, well, Isabella Johnny won the uh, the French equivalent of the Oscar, the Caesar, Caesar, yeah, the Caesar. Award, yeah. yeah, for her performance in this. But there is a scene um, which I can't remember if it precedes the. Uh, the <laughs> I'm sorry, sex I'm just saying she is like violently shaking her head <laughs> just, in disapproval. <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked at that. Honestly, and the French are different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I thought their the standards French were higher, not lower. <laughs> Well, is that? But this is my question. After having seen it, I mean, like it's it is an epic uh, freak out on the part of this actress. She goes down. Well, I think she constantly. Starts, it's a constant epic freak out. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. she maintains a pitch pretty much through the entire movie. Yeah, <laughs> like you get, would, a, you get a break when you play the teacher, but otherwise, just go nuts. Mm-hmm. That's right. There's <laughs> doppelgangers. We didn't even. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! God. Everybody plays two parts. It's like suddenly. Okay, well, we'll get back to that. Okay, so. Yeah, she she wanders down into the subway at some point um, because I don't. She starts off like in front. Of, so if I can try this scene, she's in a church looking at the uh, statue of Jesus, and she starts kind of like moaning. And then she goes into the subway. She's got her groceries with her because you have to. Have, she went to get groceries. But we don't ever see that, do we? You don't ever get sidetracked no. when you're going to get groceries like that. I mean, <laughs> and you got to stop you off. And- <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I do have demonic possession freakouts quite frequently when I go to grocery shop. <laughs> yeah, it's Walmart for you. But she loses her shit in a way that's like, I mean, it's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for me to watch anyway, you know, because I was sitting there going like, you know. I mean, I guess my thing with acting has always been like, how realistically can you per- perform a human behavior and emotion, but you fake it, right? Mm-hmm. Once you do it for real, 
then that that there's not like an artistry to that. Then you're just you know. I mean, that's, well, I mean, that's a pornography, right? I mean, like, oh, yeah. it's, you know, simulated sex scenes are an art doing it for real as pornography. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're almost at the same kind of thing with like this emotional thing. You're right. supposed Having to Having a real psychotic emotional, break. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you really do. I mean, I was like, there were times when you're watching it where you're like, legitimately concerned that like she's going to hurt herself, you know? I mean, she's yeah. flailing around and screaming and working herself into such a frenzy that it's like i don't know Mm -hmm. i can't really think of anything that was like you know that that approaches that kind of well it reminds me of um uh something along the lines of maniac Mm -hmm. where you're you're in maybe more so um something like the elijah wood one the new one Mm -hmm. the remake and everything how they're you're you're in that perspective of those people and it it feels more the craziness feels real. Like I said, the psychosis feels real. Like I feel like I'm watching. I don't feel you can capture a quote unquote somebody with a a, a craziness, someone with a mental problem, somebody going off the deep end uh, to capture that visually, I think is extremely hard. I think you have to go to a level that they did in this movie in order to get to some point where you're just like that feels like somebody is having issues. Mm-hmm. And I think this movie does that. I think they capture something in there visually that represents that. Mm. It feels very raw and very uh, real to me. Like somebody, like somebody who's having problems would be able to describe it and be like, "Hey, watch this movie, Possession. <laughs> That's how I feel every day." <laughs> it's like, oh Jesus, yeah, yeah it's intense. Yeah, and it ends with her apparently miscarrying some through, through her head. <laughs> yeah, she, she starts. She, she melts. vomits. Uh, shit pours out of her ears, yeah. and she's like oozing some kind of. Oh, I thought that was just fluids. the. I thought that was the oozing down through there that just pooled around her legs. Well, I think the way that she's. I read it as like you know she's trying to squeeze something out. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that feels like it because because yeah, I thought she was gonna pop a yeah. a fucking thing yeah. in her eye yeah. at that point. Ugh. <laughs> this is how she's all covered with raw egg and milk and all the uh, stuff that she splattered all. I mean, it's uh, disgusting. It's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah, really it's gross. Really gross. <laughs> and you're like, what? but this is also the thing I ask about, you know, when you think about actors, you know, we think of them as like, uh, you know, it's like, well, they go into these controlled situations where they do these performances that are great. And then you're like, why would you? I mean, like, you have to really believe in the project, I assume, or something yeah. like what is your motivation to, like, expose yourself in that kind of way or to that kind of psychic i mean i guess it's not psychic it, abuse if you're doing it to yourself or you yeah. know, under the direction mm-hmm. of you know the director but it's like why do you do that right what i, I want to know like what what director said to her like what what was he going for in that i mean to do this but what is the purpose of doing this like what is the what is the pur- what is the purpose of making this movie like what is is he just trying to convey <laughs> that's a good question i mean that's, that's <laughs> what's he is he trying to just convey this craziness like and to get an actor who to find someone who i guess understands what you're you want to make like this and to just be like yeah i understand and i can dedicate myself to do that mm-hmm. that's craziness have you like- also been through a traumatic breakup do you know what it feels like i want to put the audience in that yeah you know headspace just raw because that's what it feels like right i mean you know going back to that idea that like this is from a guy who's i like, had the pain of uh serious like Knock down, drag out, you know, divorce process. Yeah, and he wants a relationship to get, that just went horribly, horribly wrong. And he wants to process that, I think, and he wants to get to that level. He's like, what I felt, I want to see it. Mm-hmm. I want the audience to be able to feel it, to get to a point. I guess it's getting to a point that he thinks that people haven't seen before. I guess that's why you would want to do something like this, is to get to a level of an emotional level of rawness that you don't ever see. And I think he wanted to achieve that mm. in this performance. Because you're saying this is maybe like uh, it's a it's an emotional thing that you don't see in people when they mm. are going through this outwardly. So yeah. this is the internal yeah. 
like expression of uh, yeah of what this feels like. It's almost like they're watching the inside of these people throughout this movie. Well, maybe that's you know. Do you read the entire movie as analogy? Is the tentacled creature like supposed to be you know? It's ugly and hideous. It's like you know this woman that you love is having sex in a secret you know apartment with this thing. You know mm-hmm. this blob. It's like, is that just how you're thinking about the other person, you know? Right. Mm. Yeah. Like, oh, she cheated on you, and in your eyes, he's just a fucking monster. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And mm. so the movie just makes it literal in that case. I mean, I don't know where else to go. No, I know. I, 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 I mean, he makes it literal. We also yeah. get to meet the guy, though. Well, it's like there's... Yeah, so maybe this doesn't bear out. Cause that well, and be also the guy well, sees it. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole movie is kind of like the, like dual like humanity and inhumanity of man we don't have a single reliable narrator in this no. movie though so <laughs> anything's possible yeah i guess like it's all probably correct and incorrect at the same time yeah yeah well i know that she at some point goes off in this long monologue apparently she was a ballerina instructor oh, or something God. like that where yeah. she's torturing her students for some type of perfection uh and heinrich I think that's how he meets her, right? He's some instructor. I like or something what you did with the, those kids. <laughs> you show dedication. Would you like to go out sometime? Yeah, yeah. But she says something about like after this, you know, it's like in that subway, I miscarried, and she gets into this philosophical thing where she, there were twin sisters, one of them sister Faith and one of them sister Chance. Yeah, one of them dies, and the other one I have to keep safe and keep, you know. And that's and Sam Neill's like all on board at this point, like a child. We gotta. It's like, are they talking about Bob? I don't think so. I think they're talking about the fucking slimy thing. Like it somehow the thing that she gave birth to, she's fucking, and eventually it becomes a doppelganger of Sam Neill. Sure, that sentence. Sure, man. yep, <laughs> yeah. That's that's what we just watched, ladies that, and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you didn't understand that sentence, don't worry. Neither did we. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the title for this movie is grossly misleading. Alcohol. And, and, and inappropriate. Misleading. Yeah. Like very, inappropriate, I, I would say, even. I don't know. I actually think it's kind of perfect for it. Possession. I think the possession. No, just up here. <laughs> I, but I think it's. I, I, because if you look at all the characters, especially, I mean, the way the, way the men are all. No, a uh, sixty-four. Uh, the way the men are all talking about um, what's is it Anna? Uh, yeah, Anna. The way they're all talking about her, it's th- there is that that I guess you know they're talking about possession and they're talking about her and it's about who has her and I mean I, I thought it was going to be a possession movie like I thought somebody was <laughs> yeah going that's to get what I thought because I knew nothing too. about this movie going yeah. into it yeah but I think. Just the the raw way they act about each other, especially the way Sam Neill acts about her throughout the movie, about especially can't living without her and everything. I mm-hmm. think possession kind of marks it down yeah, correctly about, because Heinrich also I think wants to possess. They want to possess Isabella Gianni. Yeah, or is it about all the people trying to gain some type I think of? That, I think that's more it. I think there's a main one with Anna, but I think it does. Uh, apply to kind of the entire world they're living in at that point. Yeah, because she's possessed by something. We're not necessarily saying it's like a supernatural force. I mean, unless we're talking about like intense. It's not love, right? Is it love? It's a version of it. <laughs> Heartbreak? No, it- it's not nothing. It's nothing you can describe in those simple terms. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's way more intense and complicated than that. Mm-hmm. It's not like something complicated. That's, it's not something. The way they describe it is how they act it out in the movie. Because I don't think it's describable in words. Mm-hmm. You have to see it and feel it I like always, they did yeah, in this movie. I took everything as it's it's more animal than man. It's beyond what humans are capable of generally. It's an animalistic thing. It's heightened. You're saying the sense the 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 depth of whatever the sensation or the, what's possessing them. What's possessing them? Yes. I don't know. Whatever the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> There's like they talk about God and they talk about this being and I I, I think to them this is this is God. Yeah, because she talks about yeah. how it's inside her. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even there's a certain point where she where she's leaving after the kitchen. I think after they've had sex in the kitchen and she's like, and please close the door. And he says something like, because it's here with you. And she's like, yes, like that's. She's telling them that so that they protect themselves from her at that well, point. Well, wanted, they wanted to protect the kid, right? Yeah, yeah. Bob, right, because yeah. he's got Bob, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there's a bunch of, like, some kind of quasi-religious thing. At some point, we're told that, uh, you know, it's like, do you believe in God? You know, somebody says God's a cancer, and it's through cancer we find God or whatever. You know, it's like, mm. so there's a lot of of talk like that. And, uh, at some point I think Sam Neill is taunting Heinrich and saying like, whatever this thing that you saw, was it divine? Did you see God in the, you know, yeah. this moment? Mm-hmm. Well, and cause there's the moment when, um, he asked him if he found God and doesn't Sam Neill say, and God is a monster. Mm, maybe that sounds right. It could be. That sounds like dialogue from this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, and literally their God is a monster. Like mm. it just, I don't know. That's what I took from it. Yeah. Well, somehow it does end up like, you know, uh, I mean, it becomes a doppelganger for Sam Neill, but he's also um, <clears throat> involved with his son's teacher, mm-hmm. who's a blonde haired, green eyed doppelganger of his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the end of the movie, you know, after everything absolutely goes completely bug nuts, because she's, you know, the real wife is killing men in this apartment. Like, everybody who shows up, I think there's the private detective, and then the private detective's boss, and then ultimately Heinrich. She's stabbing people and putting yeah. pieces of them in the refrigerator. The private detective that just, like, chased her down the street, and then he shows up like, oh, I'm the landlord. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what? I have to check all your windows. He was just chasing uh, her. Quick. Didn't you see that guy? Just, well, I love the, the other guy, too. That's what <laughs> He comes running up to the door and she's coming out. And he's like, oop, and walk yeah, away. Yeah, I just like walk the other way. It's just <laughs> what these people think they're getting away with. I don't know. He even like runs past her going up the stairs and then gets up to the next landing and just taps his feet on the floor <laughs> like he's going up farther. Just like, she knew you were there, dude. Yeah. You knew she knew you were there. Yeah. You were running. You were having a relay race at some point. <laughs> then there's no one else on these streets. Well, for the no. most part, yeah. like a- this whole town seems to be empty, except when I think at some point Sam Neill tries to burn the creature by uh, he sets a, the apartment on fire, <laughs> explodes, and there's some lady outside like laughing hysterically. Yeah, she's all for it when this happens. Which I mean, it just contributes to this kind of really weird carnival like atmosphere of like. Or yeah. you don't know what the hell's going on or why. Oh, no. <laughs> Is it just she's like, the crazy lady it, on the corner who's yeah. who's been saying that same shit for years. Yeah. Mm. So she's yeah. all, oh, yeah, and she's all for it. That just, this happened. She's like, yes, finally. Seems, it just seems like the like general descent of man. Everyone just kind of seems. Dis- like, yes, the descent of man. You know, like everyone just seems like they're fucking losing it. And then at the end. Well, like, yeah, the end, yeah. It for seems sure. like it's the end. So it's, I don't know. That's just. Well, tell me yeah. about this ending and what. It happened so fast. The only thing that happened fast in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that had a good pace. Yeah, because it does. Well, once the crazy uh, 80s kitschy pop music yeah. kicks in. Yep. Then, and the spy subplot like reappears. and Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, like, it's punctuating scenes with, like, car crashes and, you know, yeah. just to heighten that kind of, like, anxiety that you're having all the time. And then the pace ramps up. I don't understand like, it at back all. Back up all the way and then yeah. run into that cop car. Yeah. Okay, sir. So this is to get the, the whatever, at, at that point, the spy dudes are looking for, because I, th- I think they go to Heinrich's mother's house. Yeah, they go to Heinrich's mother's yeah. house. That's where they're She's in another of. odd character, but yeah. Indeed. Sleeps in a solarium. Mm-hmm. Because that's what you do if you're that's German. You, you open that window, you get that nice, that breezy sound coming that's in at true. night. And you get to go to sleep true. to that. I'm all for it. Plus, you mm-hmm. get that nice oxygen from the plants. Oh, no, I, get, I used to have a solarium. It keeps my, young, my window Holly, was it right keeps off young. it. It's great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Love a good solarium. You She's sleep 102. Of, uh, uh, oxygen in the air. The, um, so, yeah, he, he goes there, and uh, but it turns out that his wife is there. Anna is there, right? So he creates this distraction of crashing in, mm. you know, a uh, uh, taxi outside. And then all the cars, like, explode and, like, you know, whatever. Yeah, and there's gunfire and he gets shot and a cop gets yeah. shot and blood explodes And you're like, everywhere. what's happening? And then he retreats to a an apartment, mm. which mm-hmm. I think. It's the teacher's apartment. 
Not no, yet. Cause, <laughs> no? Not no, yet. No, because that's what I thought. But <laughs> Wait, where is... Because he goes out through... Okay, so... but here's Are you the talking thing. about the staircase? The staircase. Yeah. Yeah, this oh is Oh, my God. So one. many minutes of yeah. trudging up a staircase. Well, this... The staircase... <laughs> oh, yeah, because okay, so, he goes up. Yeah. yeah. The skylight after that. It's that's like right. a big yeah. spiral staircase with a skylight, right? And as he's going up there, there's church <laughs> bells playing. Uh, yeah. He's dying, right? Climbing yeah. up this staircase. I'm like, is he going to heaven or something? Is that what we're we're heading for? Some kind of spiritual, like this is a stand-in? Uh, hey. But then all of a sudden the sound changes to like a subway sound or something. His wife comes in with the the double. Mm-hmm. Well, so, yeah, because yeah, the like, monster the is, is now it? Sam Neill again. <laughs> yeah. And at some point, I think... Then the spy guys come in and shoot them all with machine guns. Yes, like yeah. you do. Guy in the pink socks. Yep. So everybody's dead except for the the monster. Now she shoots Samuel. herself in the back. In the yeah. back. Yeah. Was, that, was she trying to do the uh, the same kind of contortion as the um, the ballet dancer? Or am I reading? No, I think you're reading too much into that. She's just trying to shoot herself. This is weird. She was trying to position it so she could shoot herself and the other Sam Neill at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. She was trying to get as far up her back to her heart as she could. Yeah. I don't think she made it. Oh, she got like right above her butt. It didn't get anywhere close. She's going to bleed out from that, and that's not going to be comfortable. No. Because no. shooting yourself in the head is so overrated. <laughs> well, I think she. I think what, she, what Sean was saying, she wanted to go through her and hit him. Yeah, is yeah. what the plan you was. You can do that. Just, you can head to head. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. Just wait for it, honey. Yeah. I got it. You can go sideways. Yeah. Too. Yeah, you can do that. Just yeah, head to head. You like, put a oh. gun right next to your that's head. Like the perfect, it's gonna like, go selfie, yeah. like suicide. Yeah. Just there like, you go. Oh, everybody smile. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the headspace of this movie. It's yeah, cool. it is. Yeah, we're talking exactly. about suicide. We're, it's not thank us. you this for not joining us on this journey. This is this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so the uh, the, the doppelganger escapes uh, from the clutches of the spy yeah, guys. Thank you. Who, I don't know who, if they're after him or not. Thanks to the helpful hand of the woman at the top of the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just that's watching this whole thing, apparently. Apparently, uh, she's yeah, been there this yeah, whole time, there, right? Like, she's yeah. got one boot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is the one, <laughs> one boot? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> And she looks nonplussed. Like non-plussed. she is not not at all phased by anything she is seeing. Yeah. She's like, I just I locked myself out of my apartment. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't into this. I don't know if this was purposeful. But at the end was her name Anna, Anya? Anna. The double she, Anna. Helen? Honor. <laughs> Uh, whatever the I'm fucking sorry. the fucking crazy. <laughs> she um she only has one shoe at the end, and then Margie is that her name? Margie. She only had one shoe, and she had the, the one with the cast. She had the cast. Yeah, and the and then she, did, she the pink sock off her shoe. Yeah, takes his shoe off. What the fuck really does it mean? Yeah, yeah, there's there's a re- there's a repetition of people only having one shoe. The shoe down the toilet stops. Exactly. Up, so there's a there's a shoe thing. Can drown yeah. in the toilet. What are you after, Mind Sean? Blown. I wonder if they're all the same. Like, are they all the same like the foot? Shoe, uh, just like the other shoe <laughs> dropping. Are they all the same are foot? The same is that foot? all it is? Just letting the <laughs> other shoe drop. Oh, oh, what if that is foot? what it is? Oh, oh what? No. It's waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if that's all sure. it's supposed to be? <laughs> you could say anything that in any uh, uh, fucking what you call that involves a shoe. And mm-hmm. well, there was another like Platitude visual motif that I was trying to figure out. Um... There's numerous shots of a character in the background, and in the foreground is the naked back of another character. Mm. And the character in the foreground, like, touches the torso and raises the arms up to which oh, I feels like Samuel, say, Sam Neill does it to his son and then again to his wife. Yes. And then the it's wife does so it to Sam fucking Neill weird. Yes. later on. And I'm like, okay, so they're going into the Jesus that pose? That feels like it's the Jesus pose. Yeah. That's what feels I feel like it is. <laughs> Like, they're seeing Jesus at that point. Yeah. All right, so we're identifying symbols here, but we just don't know how to read them, folks. If right. you have an idea, maybe we'll come to it before we end this. But <laughs> uh, so the ending of this movie uh, takes us back to this <laughs> is the- doppelganger Sam Neill humping a uh, glass door. <laughs> yeah. Well, being, just being all sexy with a glass door. Yes. That's well, what the ending of this movie is. But the glass door belongs to the doppelganger Isabella Johnny, right? Okay. Who's now looking after the couple's son. So it's like, yeah. are these the idealized versions of these two characters? Two I'm people? sorry, but no fucking person in whatever country you live in on a teacher's salary is going to afford a place like that. The place is gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to happen. Not going to happen. That's fucking weird. <laughs> When, when do we do the side podcast where we just admire the housing? Of, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no kidding. Watch? Dude, that would be my jam. <laughs> well, it's interesting, too, now that you're saying it, because this is the first time I'm thinking of this. So like, yeah, you're right. At the yeah. end, 
like since all the apartments and you know everywhere we've been, uh, the worst is the uh, the where the uh, the creature lives because the yeah. paints peeling off the or right. the wallpapers peeling mm-hmm. and Which the domestic lo- situation. There's is clay disaster. bodies in the fridge. Yes, mm-hmm. that yes. wallpaper. I'm sure in its prime it was lovely. It was damask. It was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I gotta get some of that. Nobody uses wallpaper anymore, it's right? Beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, it makes it. Yeah, you so get some plants and some drapes oh, and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. High back, just wing back shit. chairs or wingtip chairs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Wingtip, that's it's a shoe. <laughs> okay, wing back. Yes, wing back. Wing back. Yes. Wing back. Yeah. 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 Wingtips are shoes. Nice mm-hmm. shoes, though. So yeah. the kid, Bob. 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 Bob's what sitting up, Bob? there. Knock on the door. We know that it's the doppelganger because I think we can see him down the hall. And Bob goes, <laughs> yeah, goes off <laughs> on this thing where he's just like, don't open, don't, don't open, open, don't open. Don't open. And he goes and drowns himself in the tub. Yep. But that's an extended shot, too. Like, it yeah. hangs on him drowning himself for a very long time. To the point that I was like, how did they shoot this? Like, that's yeah. what I was wondering. I was like, did they give it's, the kid a little apparatus Europe. to no, put in his No, no, no. It's your, that kid breath. jumped in that tub and held his breath. <laughs> yeah. That's all it was. I, they cut, like, right before he right came Right before up. he came up. Yeah. Yep. They got every frame out of that shot. Bravo to that kid. Yeah. May he rest in peace because he died in that tub. <laughs> <laughs> so was his acting career was cut short. But, but I don't understand because was all of the scenes of of this kid taking a bath earlier on was that foreshadowing or did that mean something? I'm gonna say it's foreshadowing. Just foreshadowing. Every answer is correct, Holly. Yeah, that's yeah. true. With a movie that's like this. True. Well, that's right. He is often seen in a tub. There's often. a lot of like water imagery. Heinrich drowns in a tub. Sam Neill's always washing his face. Heinrich drowns in a toilet. A toilet. Sorry. That's what I meant to <laughs> the say. The most He gets swirly to death. Bravo to that actor because that is the most disgusting thing to put. Oh, what? How many times do you, like, you, you need to do to protect, that? Yeah. You need to protect everything toilet. around this for me to put my face in this fucking. It was a. Uh, no. I mean, I, I know it was like fake, but it was a gross toilet. No, I mean. it's gross. <laughs> no. Yeah. What do you do? You go to the hardware store and you buy one, right? That's a set that we're hopefully. God, I hope look so. Like it. I it doubt looks it. Like it's a real <laughs> no, toilet. Man, it feel... looks like a dank like pub bathroom. It's in that yeah. bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's in that. Yeah. It looks yeah. gross. <laughs> they didn't have money for Plastic. sets. Oh. It just like oh, stick your head in that God. toilet. And because he's a man who's you know takes pride oh, in his goodness. art. It's not worth it, bro. Not worth not it for this man. movie. No. Well, he's feeling competition, right? Because of the Is- Isabella Johnny scene. He's like, well, you know, if she's going to do that, then I got to. There's I a big know. difference between raw eggs and milk and right. <laughs> actual and, dirty yeah, toilet. Trying to squeeze uh, whatever out of your ears versus sticking your fucking face in a toilet forever. <laughs> yeah. That guy was in there. Mm-hmm. He may have had a breathing apparatus, but. Because he flushes it, too. Yeah. Right? yeah. And it floods. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking. <laughs> the whole f- the place it's not as bad is as the most dirty gross. toilet in Scotland or whatever from uh, Train Spotting. All right, that, oh, let's just yeah. let's, let's move on from that. <laughs> no, Jesus. All right, so the end of the so the child drowns himself. <laughs> yeah, child drowns himself in the tub, and the apocalypse happens. I mean, that's we hear air the bombing of Dresden happens. A, yes. Yeah, yeah. So from this, so it goes. Maybe we're reading this movie wrong. Maybe this movie is actually about the kid. No. I don't know. Explain how. yourself. Well, if it is, he's barely a character in his own movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I mean, the only thing he's I'm kept from is so it's not because he's kept from so much of like the raw experiences that the adults have. I can't imagine to be. But he's neglected. He's, I guess, right. He's not a main character. We always just see him kind of like after the fact. We yeah. see him by following somebody else into the scene. Yeah, yeah. this is kind of. We see the the it, true stuff when he's not around. Yeah, it's just kind of like a reminder, like, oh yeah, they're parents. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, pretty and much. And that's where it gets "quote unquote" normal is when the kid is around. Yeah, mm-hmm. when shot choice changes and all those that weird stuff. scenes, and all of a sudden Sam Neill's like playing airplanes yeah. with him. Like, oh, he's being a dad. That's, this is weird. That's, that's the right. "quote unquote" yeah. normal stuff. It's the it's that like, was foreshadowing. It, it's almost like you don't you never was. you'll never know. It was yeah yes it was the airplanes is foreshadowing. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, because like he even imitates it like crashing and like, like everything. Bombing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's more like uh, you'll never know what your parents are really like. <laughs> but it's almost like Never. I mean, but why does he drown? Your parents are <clears throat> fucked up, Colin. He chooses you don't to even know. Like jump into it, you know, to drown himself, to kill himself basically, other than rather than put up with, you know, these people getting back together. I mean, I assume did the divorce happen and this is the idealized versions of themselves coming back. I think and he's, he's just like, No, no, don't open. I'm I, fucking no, I'm I think it's like check how, it out. How, how dogs know that an earthquake is coming like, <laughs> the six yeah. months before it happens. Yeah. You're just like they're when you're young enough, you don't have anything to block all that shit. And he's just like, No, 
no, that's not dad. And he runs up and drowns himself. Yeah. Yep. So this is going to be fucked up. I'd rather be dead. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose he made the right choice because, I mean, the, the Holocaust uh, happens uh, In one way or another. Nuclear like, explosion goes off or something. Oh, there's a white light. I'm reading that. Yeah, as a nuclear, was, I mean, that's the way to do it. Just sound effects and just fucking... Strobes. Strobes of light. And Sam Neill making out with a glass just door Just fucking behind. making out yeah. with that door. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. It's very odd. Very odd. He was squirmy with that door. Yeah. yeah. Woo. He was wiggly. So he I don't was know. Wiggly. <laughs> How do you read this? Up, I mean, I don't think that, like, I still don't have, like, a better understanding of this movie. Because, I mean, even as we're trying to describe it, there's a lot we're leaving out. Oh, tons. Tons. Oh, I like, can't remember it all. It was too movie, much. This movie was over two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Was it over two hours? Yes. Yep. <laughs> oh, I thought it was two hours. In, like, yeah. seven minutes or something uh, like that. Okay. All right. Well, I suppose... Uh, he neglected to tell us this before we watched yeah. this movie. Sorry about <laughs> sure it. Did. Also Sorry. neglected to ask. Sorry. So I'm going to make a habit of from now on. Well, we know how this is going to go, this this uh, wrap-up. Well, I don't know. Will we have uh, final thoughts and figure out like what this movie meant to us individually? Who knows? We're going to find out after Igor's meal bag. But first, I mean, do you have any stray observations that you want to get off your chest about possession? I... I feel like the director saw The Shining and was like, hey, Kubrick terrorized Shelley Duvall. What if I took that to like the nth degree? You know, like I feel like he probably did give the, push them into a lot of those situations and make them, you know. She felt like she was on the verge of a psychotic break. In yeah. Movie, though. I don't feel like I feel like everybody was a participant in this movie. Mm hmm. Everyone wanted to do what they did. Did anyone else have a problem with the sounds that the ballet dancer was making? I didn't particularly notice. The, no, I didn't. I mean, she sounded in pain. Well, I don't know. Was it you, you, pain you, or you, ecstasy? You took that as pain because okay. I thought she sounded like she was about I to get, orgasm. And it was yeah. very I disturbing. Think he probably tread that line on purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of hitched breathing yeah. and she's being contorted and mm -hmm. keep the knee up. Keep the knee up. Do it. Do it. Or whatever. Yeah, I didn't like I that. Did it come off? Was it both. like a rape or something? You're kind of. It, like, yeah, I didn't like it. Hmm. <laughs> It was well. I mean, you like can, everything yeah, else you in the movie, you can definitely it's, go that way with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't know what the point of that is either. Except that <laughs> it's the well, only scene we can say that about. Yeah. Makes, well, yeah. There was there was many scenes in this movie that were very much like I can overpower you. I could do it right now. A lot, actually. You saying from the male characters? Well, in that instance, it was a female uh, right. character, but yeah. the other times, yeah, it was yeah, both Sam was... Neil and Heinrich. Both had elements of that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We were all just thinking on that well, for a minute. Yeah, because it's, again, we're, you know, we're, we're thinking on it, I think, because, as we said before, we're figuring out, it's like there are things that are placed into this movie where it seems like it's there's a thoughtful reason why it's there. Because he focuses on it. There's foresh foreshadowing for certain events and this and that. So it's like everything does seem to be there for some reason known to the director. Mm -hmm. You know, that he's we trying just, to communicate to us. We were talking earlier about how from start to finish this whole movie just like makes you uncomfortable mm -hmm. and those elements really stood out to me there was several moments where it made me really uncomfortable because it was very much um symbolism of, well not just symbolism actual physical domestic abuse mm -hmm. very much so you're saying beyond the threat of it it just seemed like oh, well he was he, beating he, her up he, at yeah, one point yeah, yeah. yeah. like it was very around, much yeah. there yeah, there was a that was that went on yeah, for a while. It did, and then it went out into the street, and then they were continuing it in then the street. Then there was a car crash. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, yeah. The, I was like, when they ran out into the street and were doing this, I was like, oh no, this movie's like, there's no coming back from this at this point. That's when I was yeah. like, it's already gone there. Yeah. They're saying up over the top, or it's hit. It's yeah. Like, it's, oh yeah. It's uh, you know level ten. How often do you see like a movie with a domestic abuse scene that takes place outside their home? Because yeah, you're doing it like, in public? You're saying, yeah, like, like they the, were, uh, yeah, they continued, like, she literally ran out of the house and he chased her down and kept beating her in the middle of the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then threatened later on to do it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It's that whole, uh, I guess, right? It's, it goes to the theme of possession, right? He thinks that she's his. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yep. Like, yeah. That's. Yeah. And Heinrich, Heinrich said something weird he said something to that effect where he was like, I have rights to you. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I don't claim any rights to you or something like that. Where yeah. 
I mean, there's a lot of all this yeah. philosophical when they stuff were in that out there. The, the murder apartment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves him because you say I instead of me or something like yeah. that. I'm like, I don't get that. He I said instead. a lot of stuff I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And there was one scene I think with the uh, the uh, like the camera that Heinrich's recording with. Where she just kind of sits down and like, it is like it, they used every shot that they, uh, or every, all the footage that they shot where you could see the actress like stopping and resetting to redo the take, mm-hmm. but they kept the whole thing in. <laughs> mm-hmm. There were a couple of times I thought they yeah. had it like at the beginning when Sam Neill got out of the car and like set his briefcase down. And then, and then he picked them yeah, back up yeah. and set them down again. I'm like, is this like some kind of okay? You're restarting, yeah. You know, and you're just kind of keeping it in. I don't know. I mean, that guy falling during the chase scene was mm-hmm. like that wasn't. I, I imagine it's supposed to happen. And just like, no, oh, keep it in because this is life. I, this is real life. Yeah, I don't like we we had said yeah. while we were watching. I don't think there's any B roll for this movie. I think they used everything they, used they all, shot. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's all in there. Yeah, it's a strange bird. <laughs> All right. Anything it's else? An understatement. Before we summon our mailman, uh, right. saving it, it for the wrap-ups. Join us yeah. on the other side of mailbag, ladies, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. We may not be there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, uh, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. That was actually Igor's doppelganger. <laughs> dun, dun, Uh-oh. Uh, why is he humping the door? <laughs> Stop. Igor. That's mahogany, Igor. <laughs> it's <laughs> rich mahogany. <laughs> and hopefully he doesn't have some kind of, you know, squiddy thing squirreled away in his room. Oh, oh. so who's going to go check? <laughs> Not it. <laughs> uh, well, about, or, oh, uh, how can uh, folks get a hold of us on uh, on Facebook? Facebook.com. Slash Saturday Night Freak Show uh, on Twitter at Sat Freak Show by email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com and hey on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak mm-hmm. Show. Please write in, we'd love to hear from you. You join the Freak Show family. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimbo Ice, well, he wrote in a little while ago, but Jimbo he wanted to, uh, us to do this uh, episode. Yeah, he says I've wanted someone to try and decipher that ending. It's awful, it's an awfully high profile film to be missed by the podcasts I listen to. And Godspeed. <laughs> well, I mean. We made it. We made an attempt. We I don't know if we, you know. know. We we went with symbolism, foreshadowing. We did our best, dude. Uh, divorce is awful. It is catastrophic, and it is uh, apocalyptic. It destroys lives. I don't think that's the message at all. Okay. No. I think divorce is uh, <laughs> it can be uh, good for people. I don't think it's that bad. Not for yeah. these people. Not for these people. But there's this is not about divorce. This is about many other things. Okay. Maybe divorce in Europe is different. <laughs> <laughs> Very much that was intense. the tagline for this movie. Divorce in Europe is different. Yeah. I always imagine possession. Like the French are supposed to be really emotional people, right? So it's like the is that ah fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, fuck you. They are. They are. But the French are more open to like multiple relationships. Mm. So yeah, I don't think true. they would have reacted this way. They would have been like, "You have another lover, okay." <laughs> Uh, about our episode showdown in Little Tokyo, Karate Warrior Two writes in. Hi, Dom. <laughs> and says the this last episode had some of the best chemistry of the latest iteration of the Saturday Night Freak Show crew. It honestly had me laughing out loud and actually <laughs> wanting to watch the movie myself. Just never change the intro. You're never allowed to change the intro. No, that'll stick around. And he says, somehow I knew what crazy movie you were talking about. That was Welcome Home, Brother Charles, a.k.a. (laughs) Soul Vengeance. Soul Vengeance. That's the title. You can buy it in Best Buy, Soul Vengeance. He said, and he owns it. He oh, says, wow, I, that's impressive. He says, I pledge to actually open the DVD if the Saturday Night Freak Show commits to watching this somewhere down the track. You know what? I we, think we should. We will. I think we should. We will. I sent a picture of the box. I'm like, oh, oh, so oh you vengeance. mean of the dick? <laughs> Dun, was like, nah, that nah. was a that was a joke. Yeah. That was like, and a, apparently our niche is dick jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did very well. We did a lot of dick jokes that episode, <laughs> and it worked. So there fun. you go. That was fun. All right, so let's go around the room and uh, hear what everybody thought of Possession. Sean, you're up first. What do you think? Uh, I recommend this movie, and I'll tell you why. 
That's a shocker. What? Michaela can't. I, she's the. You guys gave me so much shit for I know who killed me, but okay. Um, there's a line from the movie Seven that John Doe says, and this is probably not the best person to quote, but he says, What I've done will be puzzled over and studied and followed forever. And I think that's this movie. I think people will puzzle over this movie. I think they'll keep watching this movie. I'm not saying you're going to have a good time watching this movie. I don't think you should have a good time watching this movie. This movie is... It it makes you... It, but I, I can't just dismiss a movie that is like this intense, that makes you feel good or bad. I mean, I think mostly it was like not good. Um, it, it just, but it makes you feel, and it's on a level that is to me was so very intense that I can't just be like, don't watch this because it's, it took, this director took actors to a level. He took, whether it, whether you can understand it or not. And as you've heard us go around the table or not, uh, tonight, we don't necessarily understand it. We're, we're interpreting it. We're looking at it, but I think it's, it's, it's something. There's such an intensity to this movie and a weirdness that I can't say you shouldn't watch this movie. Watch it. And just, just try. you try and figure it out. I'm, I want to pawn this off on someone else maybe. But try watch it and, and just look at these actors getting to a level that I think is crazy. It's crazy to make this movie and have these characters do what they did and get to the level they got. It's... It's nuts, and it maybe doesn't make the most sense, but everyone was in on this movie. Everyone was dedicated to this movie, and it is something else that I haven't. I don't. You don't see this often, and for that reason, I think I have to recommend it. Like I said, you're not going to feel good watching this movie. You're not going to enjoy watching this movie, but I think you should watch this movie and take that for what you will. But yeah, I I recommend Possession. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, it's it's something else. <laughs> Holly, what did you think of possession? Uh wow. I I really really felt like Colin was testing us here. Um <laughs> like this felt like a feat of endurance. Like <laughs> I I don't think Michaela came out like full like a full person? Yeah, I, I don't think she no. did. I don't think any of this did. There's a part of me that's still sitting there on the couch, yeah. not really I looked sure at Colin, what is happening. As soon as this was over, I was like, I will not be the same. Yeah, again. no, it's it, like a part of us. A part of us died tonight. <laughs> um, I okay. I I've been trying to figure out how to put it into words, but I I can't find the right way to describe it. But I don't think the performances were what you guys say that were. I don't think so at all. I think she, I think they were so unbelievably over the top, and that was. I know that was the point, but for me, it that that's what made it. That's what didn't sell it. Like, she, if I had watched and thought, okay, this person's having an actual mental breakdown, that would have hit home harder. But nobody has a mental breakdown like that. That's not how it happens. That's not what it looks like. This was pure. I don't know that they're going for realism. Well, I know that, but like... Because she melts from the ears. No, yeah, that's true. That's true. But it's just like, it was it was a supernatural thing. But I, I it didn't it didn't work for me. It, it the, the craziness was just way too much. Maybe because it was the point where I like, I wanted, like, I was like, I, someone needs to kill her. She needs to die soon because I can't take it any fucking more. Like, it was... Like, that was the moment where I freaked out. I had my own breakdown during this movie. Watching that scene in the subway when she's going off forever and ever, I, like, lost my shit. I, it was just too much. It was too much. And, I mean, yeah, I this movie was weird as fuck. It was really, really weird. I... I can't imagine that this director isn't insanely pretentious about his craft because he had so many weird, obscure, blurred ideas in this movie and it did not work. It was just, it was just a hodgepodge of crazy. And 
sometimes that works and sometimes it's entertaining. Tonight it was not entertaining. So I I I can't honestly say I would ever recommend anyone punish themselves with this movie. Ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Michaela. You will be putting yourself through something in watching this movie. <laughs> you will. Yeah, it's for sure. <laughs> you guys ever seen those like 10 hour loops on YouTube of like 10 hours of like they're taking the hobbits to Isengard that just like loops that quote from Lord of the Rings for 10 hours straight? <laughs> this movie felt like watching 10 hours of Sam Neill and Ajani yell at each other. Like at the top yeah. of like, how did they even have a voice after making this movie? Because they're all screaming at each they other. They all for... had to have taken a vacation yeah. after Do we yeah. know how long it took to make this movie? No, I. Don't know. Mm -hmm. They're still making this movie. <laughs> At some point, there um, is a there is a piece of all these people who are in this Sam movie Neil, still somewhere. Sam Neil is still waking movie. up in the middle of the yes. night. <laughs> I imagine he is. He's like Raptors, and yeah. then oh, yeah. the her yeah. Anna. Yeah. He's having those nightmares. Yeah, this movie's grating and it's annoying, and I get that that's probably what the director wants me to feel. So I'm sure you're in his and what he wanted to achieve. I'm sure he succeeded in that and feels accomplished in that um, probably more than he should I like I agree with what Holly was saying there's I don't imagine a world in which this director is not incredibly pretentious um, but it's not worth it for what that payoff there is I don't even know if there is a payoff there's to no what payoff. you're going through and experiencing other than just experiencing it you know and that's I don't I've seen this type of story done better before you know like i think antichrist is a good example of this same kind of story done way better and just as disturbing if not more so disturbing than this movie um so i would definitely i would recommend that but you know and that's about a couple of, like breaking up and you know there's a kid that dies and like it's very similar but it's and it's got crazy supernatural elements too um and, like, I mean, even on, like, a completely different spectrum, but still, like, a couple breaking up and wanting you to experience, like, that heartbreak. Like, Blue Valentine is a fucking emotional endurance test yeah. of a movie that yeah. is about a couple breaking up over time, you know? So, like, this is not something – this is not new ground they're breaking with this concept. It's just – it's just not fun to watch, and it's just, like <sighs> – we have so many questions still, and we didn't even yeah. hit on half the questions we have. I, I would not recommend it. I'm cool with bizarre, but it it's got to be fun. This just this is was just yeah. It was this was a challenge, you know, and <laughs> yeah. I just was not up to it, you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I would not recommend it, Colin. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely an. I mean, it's a film as a cinematic assault, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yes, assault is a good word. Yeah, because you do. I think you know. Maybe I should have put a disclaimer on this mm -hmm. at the beginning of this movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it was yeah. like shell gave us a, after you like gave us a, what uh, the fuck? Yeah. You gave us a uh, um. Yeah, a warning on the last movie, like this is bizarre. Just go with it. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, was it? We watched with a disclaimer. Oh, was the the the, the, the devil's fucking rain. devil's rain? Devil's rain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that got a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> this movie didn't. Uh, I th actually, you know, because it's been a while. I guess in my memory, I thought it was so crazy that it might be funny, <laughs> and somehow memory has like dulled the uh, intensity of it. Oh, for you sure. Know? And so, I mean, I remember that everybody was, you know, at, you know, peak level for a long time. But your mind, you just remembered the subway and the weird Cthulhu monster, didn't you? Pretty much. You yeah. did. Well, I remembered Heinrich. <laughs> and I remember Heinrich, like, bouncing off the yeah. walls or do doing kung fu or something like that. The Cthulhu monster. And, yeah, in that crazy subway. And just people screaming at each other in an apartment. And so watching it, you know, it's like... I mean, it does feel like it's a very personal film. Like even in the way that it's structured, I don't, I can't even tell you like what the three act structure of this movie <laughs> no, no. is. You know what I mean? Because there were times when I was sitting there going, like, this feels like a scene that, like, does it, you know, is it furthering like a plot here? I mean, are we getting anywhere? And then, like, and then we're off to see like a, you know, somebody else's mother or the nanny or stuff like that, and you're just like, how is this all connected? Cumulatively. Um, it does, I guess, you know, it's like, I mean, if you've been listening to us talk about it and you're curious about it, you know, I mean, that's the type of person, obviously that you, you know, that you will want to check this thing out because you are kind of, you know, in a, in this kind of homogenized movie culture, it's like, you know, they don't make stuff like this. Like no one has made, well, I mean, I guess Michaela just made yeah. some antichrist. Actually, when I was watching, it was mm -hmm. probably like the closest analogy that I can think of, of, you know, someone who's, you know, clearly this is a person, I don't know if I say artist or not, but it's a person, the creator of this 
is somebody who is in pain. You know, the same way I think mm-hmm. of Lars von Trier movies, like when you watch Melancholy or Ooh, Antichrist yeah. or Breaking the Waves, I mean, they just like Ooh. suck you into this like, you know, pit of despair. Uh, 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 yeah, an mm-hmm. abyss. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, in a, true. it's transcendental, <laughs> you know, in a way that like, you know, that movies can actually put you in that perspective or that headspace. And I mm-hmm. think, you know, like Sean was saying, I think this guy achieves it. In this movie, and I think, you know, the, the intensity of these people's perform the actors, you know, who are in it, it's like, you don't, I don't think you do this stuff, you know, like, it's a job. <laughs> no. You know, it's like, you believe in what is trying to be communicated here, right? Like, mm. with the core of your being, and you're going to give it an all out. Because, I mean, Ajani had had a, you know, she was like, I think at the time, uh, one of France's, you know, like premier actresses, you know, I mean, Sam Neill may have been, I think he's second build, right? It is like Isabella Johnny in possession. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think she was a get for the production and probably helped with like, you know, securing the financing to actually do it. And I know I did read a quote from her where she said, you know, she was never going to do anything like this again, you know, because I I I can imagine how you'd be turned off. Yeah. You're just like, I'm done. Yeah, because it is a very raw. I mean, but again, I, I don't know if it's like Holly said. I think, you know, there is an element of like being over the top to that kind of, you know, where it's like, to me, it's like when you're grading a performance, you know, it's like if you have no top and you just go like for the rafters, it's like, is that like a controlled thing or you're just kind of allowing, you know, your physical you know, you know, person to get carried away by, you know, this. Uh, I don't know. It's almost like uh, like a religious. Um, what do you call that? Uh, like a transcendent kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or it's kind of like, or some kind of self hypnosis or dance or something like that, where you're a performance art or something, where you get into mm-hmm. this and just kind of let it carry you away. And I mean, it's it's shocking to watch, you know, and it's painful. And I guess the whole emotional state of the movie is kind of uh, um, peaked and aggressive, and you know, I mean, but I think that's what the the director was after so was he successful yes will you like it probably not but you know i suppose all movies don't have to be um you know they don't have to be entertaining i think it helps you know if you <laughs> sure if you can if you can code whatever the message is that you're trying to get across in something that's entertaining it makes that it helps. easier yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes it easier to digest to take but you know how else do you represent like the agony of you know some a disintegrating uh relationship you know, whether you want to experience that, I don't know. But there's squid monsters and murder and spies and espionage and explosions. Oh, you know? you come don't, on now. don't say there's no, spies and espionage. Don't. There's no spies and espionage in this movie. We don't that's, understand it, but there's I'll, some kind of. I'll yeah. let you have squid monsters. There's gun that's, play. Yeah. There's, okay, there's squid monsters. Play. Designed by Carlo Rambaldi. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I Sex think. Sex with a squid monster. Did we actually mention that that happened? Because yeah. that happened. Wait, and what, what did she keep saying during it? It's almost. so close. It's or close. It's almost. 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 Almost, yeah. Almost. I was hoping she meant almost done with the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we went from rubber cat monster sex to now rubber right, squid. Yeah, we're just getting in the weird sex. What's yeah. up next week, yeah. you wonder? Oh, yeah. rubber monster sex. <laughs> God, now I have to pick uh, a movie with rubber monster sex. <laughs> yeah. Mm, I'll find one. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're out there. Um, but, yeah, I think I would, uh, I would recommend this movie to uh, adventurous film goers. You know who you are, but uh, the rest of you are advised to stay clear <laughs> of possession. So um, next week, dear listener, we're going to do something that we started last dear year. Dear reader. <laughs> dear brailler. Wait, this is the right episode, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, we're going to do the best and worst movies of ni- uh, two- 1990. <laughs> <laughs> 2017. Wow. Colin just had an acid flashback. <laughs> Sometimes the words just come out of your mouth. You don't even know. What 1992. You're yeah. Why not? That was a good year. It was stuck there. Uh, yeah. Oh, so let, you uh, know what? Fuck it. Forget the, this year. Let's do, do 1992. 1992. Yeah. I'm all the for best it. and worst movies of 1992. Yes. I'm That's all for a it. side. This is a free. Uh, side a side show. show. Yeah. No way, dude. This was a great year for movies. Mm-hmm. We're doing top five of 2017. Top five and one worst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One worst one or worst. 17. Well, the worst. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So now we've got our work cut out for us. We got to watch a bunch of movies probably over again in the.
the next week and, uh, and get all caught up. Look at lists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got what was released this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this will be fun because we do watch stuff other than the stuff we watch. We do because so. God, if we just watch the stuff we watch on this show, we'd all go insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we would. Yep. There you go. All right, and we hope you'll join us on this adventure. And that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. The basement <laughs> is going dark. <laughs>